Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another coffee chat. Alright, make sure the forearms are get on point today. I think we're good there. Speaking of which, um, you know, it's been brought up yet, yeah, my forearms are looking decent, but since I'm going over and doing, uh, focusing on for a while, again, I want people to be clear, it's for a while. Uh, I am by no means abandoning strength. But yeah, I'm like, if I'm going to chase all these things and I'm going to maximize muscle mass, minimize body fat, I should probably start training my calves and forearms. Now, that's kind of funny because a lot of people are like, well, you have big calves, what do you do for them? Or, you know, forearm specific work. I haven't really been doing either one. My calves are from squatting, from genetics. So I'm actually thinking, uh, you know, it would be a good idea to start training all these things. Start training all these things. You know, just like you guys are seeing me coming in doing lateral raises, doing curls, all this stuff. Well, maybe I should start doing some wrist curls. I did them for a little while, actually. All right, maybe I should start doing my calves. I might work the neck training back in with the neck harness. Because here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. If everything is, is well developed, we're going to be balanced. So at that point, uh, you know, if everything is well developed and then we get lean, what happens? Well, we look jacked. We look good. And the other thing to think about, uh, you know, as I think about it, especially, uh, all right, the forearm training, it might help my deadlifting. It might be good with my guitar stuff because it will build more forearm stamina. Not that it's not good, but it's a good thing for me. All right, uh, calves. Calves are a big muscle involved with a lot of calories of walking and stuff. So what if we're going to talk about fat loss? Calorie expenditure, energy turnover. Wouldn't calves be helpful? I think so. Building more calf muscle. I mean, my energy turnover is high, but what if I want to make it even easier to lose body fat? Gain more muscle. Particularly gain muscle in areas that would be active. Right? This is a, a factor a lot of guys who are chasing uh, that look. You know, they want to be ripped and everything. It's something they're not factoring in. Muscle mass equals more energy turnover. A lot of people say, okay, but it's only a small amount during your, your resting to your resting, metab uh, resting metabolic rate. And that's true. But what about when you're up moving? That's the thing that I found. People burn way more calories than they have muscle the more muscle you have. And I mean, think of, of even calf training. And this is going to, again, we're talking about optimizing stuff. What is something researchers have noticed that where the best distance runners in the world come from? Okay. Very specific couple of countries. Kenya and Ethiopia. Okay. Do you know that researchers looked at this and figured out why they're so good at distance running? They live in areas that in recent times have suffered horrific uh, famines and things, like in recent generations and centuries. Horrific famines. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. So bad that only the percentage of the population with the slowest metabolisms or slowest energy turnovers survived some of those periods. I mean, that's that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. All right, what's been the end result? How did how did they they get the lower rate? People with less calf muscle. What they found is that people in specifically those famine-stricken regions have less total muscle fibers in their calves that reduces the swing weight of their leg when they're distance running okay you see where we're going why are they good at distance running it's easier they burn less calories while running enough so enough so that it gives enough of an advantage that that is where your best distance runners come from other people struggle to compete with that 
okay, purely, based purely upon less muscle in their calves. All right. They burn a lot less calories per mile. All right, let's come back over. Talk about energy turnover and weight loss. Quads absolutely matter. We know quads matter. Quads are the biggest muscle in the body, have the more potential for the most energy turnover. But what about those calves? All right, what about the swing weight of those calves? If you build more calf muscle, your quads, if you got big quads, even better calorie burn, have to work harder to swing those during everything you do. All your standing, walking, well, any walking, running, all those things. All right, it's increasing the resistance. All right, this means we can burn through more energy when we want to lose body fat. There are a lot of benefits to maximizing uh, your muscle growth everywhere. But then we come over to the thing of, of, of what if we do want to look better? Well, I think just building muscle everywhere works for that. You know, within, within your ability, uh, I mean, I'm not going to be blasting a ton of gear and being pro bodybuilder size. But again, if we're chasing a look, we should be well filled out. We shouldn't have weak points. We need everything bigger. That includes your calves, your forearms, your traps, your upper chest, whatever it happens to be, your lats, glutes, everything. Wherever you are lagging needs to be brought up. You know, and that's, again, what I'm trying to express with a lot of this. And that's what I've told people the same thing. Uh, this is not a deviation from my philosophy that I've been saying for years and years. Muscle mass raises your strength ceiling. Okay. Raises your strength ceiling. Muscle everywhere helps with other stuff. Building your forearms can help with your deadlift and your bench press. Okay. Calves could help with your squat. And so now I'm going to look at doing more and more of direct work on a lot of the areas I've neglected. We know things like my glutes and my back and all that stuff is, is well developed. It's not weak areas for me. But people are noticing the difference in what they're seeing in, in the vlogs and in the pictures. I mean, I'm changing relatively quickly uh, just due to adding some certain small exercises and then stripping some body fat down. That's all I've had to do. And I'll just continue that trend, but I think that the next step for me is to start actually working muscles that I haven't been doing any direct training for. Let's see what happens with them. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. I'll talk to you guys next time.